Hi, my name is Soumya Pillai and welcome to Pure Science, where I explain the biggest science stories of the week. Now, before I get into this week's discovery, what if I told you a laser beam could actually push harder when it travels through water than when it travels through air and yet another experiment could show the exact opposite? I know that sounds contradictory, but this is at the heart of one of physics' oldest puzzles. How much momentum does light really carry when it passes through matter? In the vacuum of space, the answer is simple. Light has energy and Albert Einstein showed us that energy is always tied to momentum. The rule is straightforward. Momentum equals energy divided by the speed of light. Easy, right? But things get tricky when light enters a medium, something like glass or water. So over time, as the topic gained more interest among scientists, two different answers emerged. The first came from a German mathematician and physicist named Hermann Minkowski. He argued that when light goes through a medium, its wavelength gets shorter and that it makes its momentum bigger. On the other side, Max Abraham, another German physicist, argued that momentum should actually get smaller because the medium soaks up some of the action and the force the light exerts should be less. Now, both sides had convincing math and over the past century, experiments sometimes agreed with Minkowski and sometimes with Abraham. One moment light looked stronger, the next it looked weaker. This tug of war became known as the Abraham-Minkowski controversy and for decades nobody could explain why both seemed right. A new study has now been published suggesting that the reason for this tug of war was that we were leaving out something important, the spin of light. Let me tell you what that means. Light isn't just a wave or a particle. Photons or the particles of light also carry spin, which you can think of as a built up twist. It's tied to polarization, which is basically the way light waves vibrate. That is why if you wear polarized sunglasses, you filter out certain directions of the spin. The researchers argue that if you look at light's momentum in terms of its spin, which means that if you project momentum along the direction of that spin, everything starts to click. In this view, Minkowski's theory is telling us about the size of that spin projected momentum. And Abraham's theory is telling us about the average value that actually shows up as a physical force on the material. So in a sense, both were right. They were just describing different sides of the same coin. To make this work, the study rewrote the equations of light in a medium so they look more like a direct equation, which is a relativistic wave equation that describes electrons. That might sound abstract, but the point is it puts spin at the center of the picture instead of treating it as an afterthought. And once you do that, not only does the old paradox make sense, but you also get a bold new prediction that light traveling through a medium might not move in a perfectly smooth path. Instead, it could jitter slightly, a trembling motion called the Zitterbewegung in German which explains the quantum theory predictions for electrons. We haven't seen this effect in light yet, but if the experiments confirm it, it would be a completely new behavior of photons. Now, this isn't just a philosophical puzzle about momentum. The way light transfers momentum is what makes a whole range of technologies possible. Optical tweezers, which use lasers to grab and move tiny objects like cells, depend on it. Laser cooling, which slows down atoms until they are nearly motionless, depends on it too. Even futuristic spacecraft designs like solar sails that ride sunlight across the solar system are built on this principle. If we can understand exactly how momentum works inside materials, we can make these technologies more precise and maybe even invent new ones. And it all clears up why past experiments seem so contradictory. They weren't wrong. They were just looking at different aspects of momentum. Some were sensitive to the magnitude, others the average force. With spin in the picture, both results make sense together. 
It's important to stress that this is still a theory. The scientific community needs to design experiments to test it, especially the prediction about the trembling light. But it is a promising step and it shows how sometimes the solution to a century-old puzzle isn't picking one side over the other, but realizing that both sides were just glimpsing parts of a bigger truth. This was all from me. I am Soumya Pillai and you were watching Pure Science.